at Excel M2, January 2011, question 4, on work and energy. Quite a nice question, but uh, a fair number of marks for it. This question is on the work energy principle. Uh, pause the, the video, take a moment to read it. Okay, the first thing that we have to do is find the work done and drag in the box from A to B. And if you read the question, there is friction. Uh, the coefficient of friction is a quarter, so mu is 0.25. Friction will be equal to mu r because it's sliding, it's been dragged up the plane. So friction will be 0.25 r. Okay, so to find the work done in dragging the box from A to B, let's just think about the the energy changes that happen. We're going to have a work done against friction, and we're going to have a gain in potential energy, gravitational potential energy. So, on the next slide, there'll be room to put that in. So the work done would equal, if I can just map it out first of all, work done will equal the increase in gravitational potential energy, that's the work done against the weight, plus the work done against friction. So we just got to evaluate these terms. Now R, by resolving perpendicular to the plane, R will equal 30 G cos 20. So friction which is mu r, 0.25 r, just using the calculator here, that comes to be 69.07. 69.07 that's the frictional force. So, the second thing we, know, we need to note here is that the increase in height is here, and just by simple trigonometry, that distance, because the, because the hypotenuse is 50, h is 50 sine 20. So, the increase in gravitational potential energy is 30 times 9.8 times 50 sine 20. Plus the work done against friction is 69.07 times the distance that the object was dragged with friction acting against it. So, that was uh, uh, 50, 50 meters. And that works out to be 8480. That'll be joules. That's that first bit done. On to the next bit. Very similar this next bit. This time it's released from rest at B at the top here. And it slides down the slope like this. So this time, as I said, it's very similar. This time, basically, It'll be the loss of GPE, loss of gravitational potential energy. It'll be the gain in kinetic energy plus work done against friction. It's worth writing out like that just to show the examiner you know what you're doing. So, again, plugging in the numbers here, we've got 30 mgh, 30 times 9.8 times 50 sine 20 equals a half times 30 v squared, half mv squared, plus the work done against friction, which is 69.07, that's the frictional force as before, times 50. Rearrange these terms. Be careful of the calculator. Make, it, make sure it's not set to radians or anything silly like that. You should get uh, 15 7, 4.2 equals 15 V squared. And then V works out to be 10.2. That's it. The marking for this question. We had, um, let me see, for the first part, for six marks, we had various method marks. We had, we had the method mark for this working up friction, a method mark for that uh, statement of the well, the use of that idea, that principle for conservation of mechanical energy, and we had a method mark 
for um, let's see those friction oh the for the potential energy the mgh then accuracy marks well accuracy mark went along with that method mark there along with um, there and there actually six marks three method marks three accuracy marks for basically the the, the components of that uh, of solving that first part. For part B, similar allocation of marks, I think. A method mark for this, for using that principle, and two accuracy marks for putting all the numbers in correctly and getting the the, the right numbers here. And a final M1A1. Like that. So basically what they're doing there is they're giving a method mark for the principle of loss of gravitational potential, accuracy marks for putting in the right quantities, then a method mark for rearranging it to solve and find V squared, and an accuracy mark for, for V. And that's, your, that's that question done. Okay, thank you for listening.